Hello everyone, welcome to my first video um, of my first layout using the Craft Consortium Gardener's Delight Premium Collection Kit. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be using. Now I have to say, I put together a whole heap of things into a box that I found that would work with this collection. Um, but I'm just going to bring them out as I use them because there's just way, way too much. Um, I've selected some dies to use. I've selected some stamps to use. And I found a bag that's got all different garden embellishment things in it. So I'll be pulling some of those as well. But I'll just show that to you as I go because I, it's just too much. But here's the basics for today's layout. So from the... Uh, Gardener's Delight Premium Collection. I am going to use this paper right here, which is the gardening glove paper. I'm also going with the pearlized floral print, and I will probably use both sides of that. Um, probably for matting, not really sure yet. And then because my photos are actually um, a type of jonquil, I'm going to use this paper. And I've pulled out two sheets rather than one simply because my jonquils are double. So they do look different to this, but also they're white ones. So if you look at this page... The ones along the bottom here are whiter and the ones along the top section are yellower. So I've got this plan. I'm thinking of like fussy cutting and using this edge here um, in my layout, but I want two, so hence two papers. And I'll probably cut out some others. I'll f probably fussy cut some out and I will definitely be using a section um, as background paper. I will not be using the back, I don't think, with the distortions. My first video and showed you then. I'm going to try and put in one of these brass watering cans. Now, I didn't mention in the first video, this is actually from a different collection. Same company. Um, it's from the Herborium collection. So it's a, it is a gardening one, but it's a different one. The brass charms that come with this collection are actually little tiny carrots, which is super cute. Um, and then I thought, I've got these jelly bean um, soup alpha stickers, which do sort of pull some of the green, the light green that's in these papers. So I thought that might work. Give it a go also pulled this and i don't know why i was just looking through my whites and this just grabbed me i think because it's floral and the papers are quite luxurious with this pearl essence i can get away with a little bit of glitz wouldn't normally use glitter paper in a garden layout but there's always a first time and then i've pulled also these two greens um, which really work more with the greens in the leaves on this paper here. Um, also for matting. And then I've got this, uh, these chipboard flowers, which are really old from TLC, Top Line Creations Company, which of course no longer exists. I've got so many of these, so I'm hoping I could do something with the chipboard. I'll alter it some way and use them as part of an embellishment. And then I have my Vicky Booten Foundation Mixed Media Paper. And the reason that I'm have, using a piece of this, and it will be, um, it will be uh, used for background paper, is because today I thought I'm going to do something a bit different and I'm going to do some watercolour work. So I do... Um, paint in watercolors um two years ago i was really into it and i was using watercolor um, pencils and watercolor paints and a few years ago when i went to japan with my mum, i bought this gorgeous set which was hard to find back then um, now you can get them in australia quite easily so as you can see i had to color swatch it 
because it's all in Japanese and I don't read Japanese. Um, so I'm going to have a go using these. You can see I've hardly used them at all. And what made me think of them actually was they've got some pearlized paints in here. So I thought, oh, I might be able to use some of that. Get a bit of a sheen happening on the paper. Um, anyway, we'll see how it goes. So that is my plan. I am going to today work from a layout from um, scrapbook.com. Now I can't actually show it to you. I'm using half of sketch number 16 and half of sketch number 14. And before we start, I better show you my photos. So here are our beautiful jonquils. Now they're doubles, so they have more petals, but gorgeous. This is what I'm using. This is what I'll be scrapbooking. Okay, I'm back and ready to go. So I'm not sure if you know much about um, watercolour painting, but generally a lot of watercolour artists will lightly draw in where um, their image before they start to paint or use watercolour pencils. Uh, a lot of, when you watch a lot of their YouTube videos, you often don't see it because of their lighting but they usually have this really faint image that they've drawn there before they're painting. So they're not all just brilliant artists that are just randomly painting <laughs> with a brush. Um, there is usually something on the page. Um, now, with the design that I'm using from Allison's, it is broken into tri uh, triangles. So what I'm gonna do, what my plan is, is to have my water color image on this corner and then I'll put paper and paper here and then I'll have um, two of the photos on top of that some way for the left page and then the right page will be uh, different to that but in regard to the water coloring that's what the plan is so I'm thinking then I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm not going to, you know, make it look like this gorgeous, realistic image. That's not what I'm after. I'm going for, as Janet Madison says, some mood and feel. But I do want to include an image that's, you know, similar to what we're working with. So if we look at this paper, We've got these long leaves that jonquils have, and you can see here. This. So I'm going to put some of those in. I'm going to sit them up slightly because I'm thinking I will we'll probably have an embellishment cluster at the base here, working around here. And I'm just putting some leaves in. So here we go. And as I said, I'm, you might not even see it because... Like most things, it can be quite difficult to see. So I'm just doing some really simple leaf shapes. Not worrying too much about the base because I will be covering that over. And I think I better put a stalk though. Just really need to consider where that halfway mark will be because I'll be across here. So chances are that I might just put a straight stalk in there and then have another leaf through here. A bit too skinny that one and that's all I'm going to do now if you have worked with watercolor paint you will know that one of the beauty the beautiful um, techniques that you can do with watercolor is wet on wet that just means that you wet your 
um, paper first or your cardstock in this case and then you go in with more paint over the top what working with wet and wet allows you to do is um, control the flow of the water and the paint so if i which is what i'm going to show you in a moment if i want to put a color around these leaves i'm going to come in with clear water and be very careful that I'm not getting the water onto my leaves um, because the water on the paper can, will make a barrier if we do that. If I go onto the leaves and the, whatever colour I put on here is going to flow onto there as well. Now I am working on my slope surface not ideal for watercolour <laughs> not ideal at all so we'll see what happens um, but we could have some seepage and running depending on how much water I apply Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop in some of this green pearl essence. And see how that will work with it. I really should have two containers of water. This is bad watercolour practice. You should have one with your clean water and one with your one for cleaning your paint off your brush all right so i'm dropping some of this in now it's quite nice i might need to just wet my surface a little bit look at that it's quite pretty i'm not sure if you can see it i think it's um green bits through there as well and because some of the surface is wet and some of it's dry see it won't go any further than that unless like if I tip the paper it would but I'm trying not to do that I'm going to have to put a little bit of water up here to get the paint to move. Pick up some green.
I put a few splatters on here. And I might bring this down further. Let's wait it up here before we This whole corner right to here will be able to be seen. So we just drop some more paint in there. I'm going to also put a bit of gold through it as well. Now it's just deciding which one. So I've got this one which is more coppery and this one and this one. But I think I'm going to go this one and I really think this is probably, ooh, this could be a mistake. We might need to check it out. Look how dark it is. Can you see that? Oh, sorry, I'm off camera. All right, let me just show you again. So I have my choices were this gold, this one, which is a little bit coppery, or this one. However, look, it's really quite dark. So I'm just going to test it. I might just, I'll just test it over here because we're not going to actually use that. Mm, see, it looks a bit... Might be too blacky. No, I don't think I like it, so I'm not going to use that gold. I'm changing my mind. Which, of course, you can do, being the artist. So let's see what this one's like. Remember the Tim Hart saying, you do you. Love that saying. So if it's not working for you, do something else. Yeah, that's better. That's what I want. Wanting. Right, so using this one, the lighter one, much nicer. Just going to get it nice and wet. Much better. Little splashes of gold there. Perfect for what I'm looking for. I'm not worried about it getting on the leaves because I will be painting over those in a moment. Oh, I love that splash up there. Yes, this is what I wanted. It is good. Gee, I'm tempted to drop some of it in, but I don't know. We might leave it. I don't think I will. We can always add later. Okay, time to dry it. All right, so we're gonna pick out some greens. So let's have a look at what we've got here. So we've got about, oh, what is there, seven or eight greens. I'm thinking that I'm liking this one, this one and this one. This dark one would be really nice as well. So if we look at our paper again, you know, we're trying to match up something that's going to work with this paper. I'm looking um, at the colours in here and that's working quite well with those flowers. Even though um, the silver grey has um, gone, it looks more browny and goldy now that we've added the green to it. But it's going to work fine with these papers. Yep, I think it'll be okay. So the clue, um, one of the things with watercolour is that the less you use, the lighter your colour is. And so I'm going to get out my handy little lid, which I use for everything. And that looks a bit dirty. Let's just give it a clean. And I'm going to go with, let's go back to our sheet here. I think I'm 
going to go with some of this. So if I look at my box here, that is that one, which looks like I haven't even used before. Um, so I'm going to pick some of that up. We're going to water it down a bit. Actually, we're going to water it down quite a lot. So here's the paint. And I'll, I will put it on here so you can see. So that is it, full strength. Oh, that's it, full strength. But if we add water to it, we can get it really light, like so. So my plan is to try and get some on here, but really light. So once again, I'm going to, we might get some pearlescence in here as well, because I've already, I'm using the same water, such bad behavior to do that, but anyway. Uh, working on this one. So I'm going to just pick up a tiny amount of this. Drop it on here. And there we have some light paints, some light greens happening. Now you can just paint it straight on here if you want. Like so. Depends what a effect you're going for. I think because we're doing leaves it's fine just to paint it straight on there. So you want some areas that are light and some areas will be dark. Just picking up a bit more of that paint. See how little you use with watercolour? It's quite amazing. Hardly anything. Oh, now see, I've picked up more paint there, so we could have been a little bit darker there. Grab it a bit more water, trying to keep it light. I don't want all of it to be dark and all of it to be light. Trying to control what's happening. But I'm being pretty loose with it. Because, you know, it's not that precious we're just playing we're having a bit of fun now with watercolor you can pick up paper <laughs> you can pick up paint from the paper and add that in as well so here we're going darker now All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'm going to put a few green splatters around too. So I've got this really dark one. I'll drop a bit of that in. Oops, I need some more water. It's not wet enough. 